My name is Rosie Lynch, a double major in anthropology and religious studies with a minor in Asian studies. And I'm here to talk to you today about meditation, some of the origins from where it's from, what it is, how to practice, when to practice, and some of the challenges involved. So, as many of you probably know, mindfulness practices and certainly meditation originates from Eastern religious traditions. Um, it's very much rooted in spirituality. Um, there are many different forms that it takes in religions like Buddhism, in certain Hindu traditions, certainly um, mystic kinds of traditions where practitioners would often, the holy people would try to search for God in some way. Um, and I think also it, it surfaces in various forms of prayer too. With that in mind, I think it's important to acknowledge where it originates from, but not also let that get in the way as you approach it. Because, for instance, in uh, the Buddhist, in various Buddhist traditions or Hindu traditions, the purpose might be to see God or gods or to somehow access this idea of your higher self, which can mean a number of things. Um, the way I like to look at it is in order to realize your highest potential, in order to work through barriers that so much of us face in terms of anxiety, self-doubt, um, depression, fears, in order to be able to realize that maximum potential. And, and that's really um, you know, one term that appears in Sanskrit from Hindu traditions is Purusha, which means um, basically that idea of the higher self or of a higher consciousness. So meditation and um, mindfulness has been written about so much across the centuries and a very well-known writer on mindfulness practices, his name is John <coughs> Kabat-Zinn, he defines mindfulness as, hold on, here's the get it wrong. <coughs> mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. Non so what does that mean? Basically, mindfulness, in, in whatever form you practice it, means paying attention and allowing. So you can pay attention to your thoughts. You can pay attention to the way your body feels, the sensations you're having. And allow that to happen rather than fighting it internally, feeding into issues of self-doubt or rejection or, or many of the things that we feel on a, on a daily basis, even at a low level of kind of consciousness. So this fellow, John Kabat-Zinn, he established a, a system called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, uh, very well known and practiced throughout the country and obviously the world at this point, um, which he basically acted as a translator between um, Eastern traditions with um, the basis in spirituality um, and our Western traditions of science. So just a simple Google search of meditation or mindfulness these days would result in um, Lots of kind of fluffy, flowery articles, because uh, it's all over the place, but also a ton of scientific research by psychologists, by neurobiologists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because many people have taken interest in the benefits that can result in a mindfulness practice or meditation practice. Some of those are, I mean, you name it, you want it, and Meditation supposedly will give it to you. <laughs> um, so that's anything from stress relief, uh, less anxiety, less depression, uh, quicker metabolism, higher higher immunity to fight diseases, better sleep at night, 
more peaceful relationships, and so on and so on and so on. There, there are a lot of benefits that are touted by this practice. Um, the reason being that it kind of unifies your thoughts, so your mind and your body, and is a way of better controlling it. So um, rather than kind of racing through your day and allowing your thoughts to get the best of you, you're able to kind of, you know, anchor those down and take better control over how you feel. So I brought up a couple examples of this kind of research. Just a smattering of what's out there, mind you. So th these um, came from an article in Forbes magazine. Um, the first is that recently Yale University found that a regular meditation practice resulted in decreased activity in the brain's default mode network, or DMN, which, um, as I understand it, is a kind of brain pathways or a, a part of the brain that is often associated with our wandering thoughts or me-centered thinking. Um, then John Hopkins University found that meditation can be as effective in minimizing depression as antidepressants and found similar results when it comes to mitigating anxiety and pain. Pretty cool. Um, the third one that I picked out is from Harvard. Um, Harvard scientists found that following just an eight-week meditation routine showed an increase in cortical thickness in the hippocampus. My psychology majors in the room would know that um, that's responsible for our learning and memory. Um, they also found this thickening in other areas of the brain associated with emotional regulation and metaprocessing. Um, this finding was coupled with a decrease in the cell volume of our amygdala, which governs our fear, stress, and anxiety reactions. So on brain scans, this meditation shows physical results to our brain. It, it changes the structure of our brain. So I, I think it's really cool that scientists and academics of all sorts have turned their attention to the way that this practice shows real results and can be a really beneficial part of someone's everyday life. Of course, all of these scientific research uh, findings can be very motivating, but that doesn't make meditation any easier to practice. <laughs> With that said, let's um, try a little demonstration. I'm going to present and lead you through three different exercises, and we'll Y'all have a chance to talk about it, too. Um, the first one is going to be a short, silent exercise. I invite you all to get in a comfortable position, whatever that means for you. Just start to relax your body a little bit. Allow your eyes to close. And allow your breath to be natural and deep and free. So, I'm going to use my handy dandy insight timer to start us off. So, you'll hear two bells. The first will signal that the meditation is officially beginning, and the second will be that it's over. meditating with 66 other people, my app tells me. <laughs> so, congrats. Everyone survived their first one minute meditation. Did everyone get a sense that it was just about one minute long? Yeah. I didn't tell you on purpose, so you'd have to like, kind of do it out. <laughs> a little tense. Great. So, um, next, I'm going to lead you in a second meditation exercise. This one will be a little bit longer. And... I think that for a lot of people, one minute is kind of like totally in your comfort zone, and then as you lengthen that amount of time, it can become less comfortable because you get bored. Yeah. 
hands. Um, and so, while many people practice a silent meditation on a regular basis, uh, many other people find it much more helpful to use a guided meditation, whether that's someone in the room leading it or an audio recording, which you can find tons of them online. So I'm going to give a shot at leading you all in a meditation. So as I set up my thing, uh, get yourselves ready. Get yourselves comfortable. If you weren't comfortable last time, do something different. <laughs> and again, there'll be two bells. So one to start us off with just 10 seconds to kind of settle in, and then one to conclude. While you sit relaxed, begin to tune into your breath. Allow yourself to inhale and exhale freely, but just notice how that makes your body move with each breath in and out. Maybe you feel your chest rising or your shoulders slightly. Maybe if you pay attention, you can notice the feeling of the air with each inhale, moving through your nostrils to the back of your throat and down. Notice how that feels. And with each exhale, notice if you feel a little differently. Maybe you can relieve a little bit more tension each time. Begin to scan your body at this point. Which parts of your body are calling out for your attention for whatever reason? Maybe they feel tingly, cold. Maybe you feel a dull pain somewhere. I often feel it in my lower back. Take the time to notice that pain or that sensation. But try your best not to resist whatever feeling it's producing in you. You want to approach your body in a compassionate and non judgmental way. Bring your attention to other parts of your body. Maybe your forehead. Maybe you'll notice that you're harboring some stress, some tension in that upper brow. So on your inhale, try to breathe into that area. Pay attention to that area. And on your exhales, see if you can relieve some of that. Pay attention to your eyes. Are you forcing them closed more than necessary? Is your jaw clenched? Release it and let it hang gently. At this point, you may have noticed your mind wandering away from the sensations of your body. That's okay. It might be helpful to come up with a phrase, something you could tell your mind to remind it to focus. Something like, not now, or be here now. As thoughts come, just observe them. Watch how they rise. And see if you could watch them just kind of drift off. 
the same way that they came. As you watch, don't mistake your thoughts for who you are. Our minds just like to wander. Like I said, it's helpful to have a, um, it's helpful to have some saying that you kind of keep in your back pocket, which is either like, not now, thoughts, or mm -hmm. something like that, when you have those really kind of ingratiating thought patterns that stop you or that make you upset during your mindfulness practice. And um, let's talk just briefly about some of the challenges one of them is like getting in a comfortable position. I know um, a lot of times, maybe traditionally, mindfulness is practiced on the floor, um, but uh, like cross-legged on the floor, but you could do it whenever you want, however you want. Um, and the biggest excuse is people always say they don't have enough time. That's not true. <laughs> just admit it to yourself. It is <laughs> have enough time, you just don't want to do it, and that's because it's hard. But really can get a lot out of it. So I encourage you to all give it a shot.